Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, and uh, welcome to another series of three Age of Wonders episodes. I'll be recording three of them today. So um, let's just jump right into it. You guys know how this works. I want to begin with great, great feedback from Tarsak. I'm very, very thankful for this. This comment comes from Tarsak and pointed out that I actually have access to all the equipment I need to make Mogwai immortal, like, now. Or at least within a few turns, as soon as I can shuffle some items around. Um, one of the things that I did not realize was that the staff on my wizard, this uh, Frostling White Witch Staff, actually grants 60% fire and frost protection. So that Mogwai is already at 100% fire, so that doesn't matter so much. But the frost, he's not. He needs that. So with that item and a couple other little things I can do, I can actually get Mogwai to 100% to all resistances, 160% blight, and even a little bonus on fire and spirit. So um, I'm just going to do this now so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing. For starters, that uh, I need to get rid of an item from Mogwai's inventory. Now I realize that the Dreadnought is going underground and there's no reason for me to give that gold wyvern to anybody else. So that's going to stay with Mogwai. This guy can go to the Dreadnought. That frees up a spot in Mogwai's inventory. I'm also going to get rid of the Subsidian Wyvern Egg and send it to my rogue. I don't remember if he had a flying unit uh, spot available or not, but uh, he's not gonna he's not going to need it. Um, or he, he might need it more than Mogwai. I, I don't remember if he had a flying uh, unit already or a flying mount, that's the word I'm looking for. But I just need to get Mogwai's space cleared up anyway. So um, I could also probably sell this Flaming Mace of Yaka. I'm not going to need that. So I'm gonna get that out of my way now just to kind of clean some things up. All right. Um, Mogwai is, he can hang on to that headgear for the moment, but that's going to get replaced before long. Uh, the rogue is good. I'll just stick that over there. And we're going to take the wizard, or take his staff and send that to Mogwai right away, because it's going to take four turns to get there. So that's uh, a big part of the plan. Get that, get that to Mogwai. I'm going to kind of shuffle some things in his inventory, um, just to group things together. And then in Maine, what's going to happen... Sorry, Nanhild. I'm already... Okay, I'm off to a bad start, guys. I'm sorry. In Maine and Nanhild, if it doesn't make any sense, if I say one of their names, uh, just assume I meant the other one because I can't keep them straight. Um, so anyway, Nanhild here has got that uh, uh, green drake shield. That also needs to go to Mogwai right away because I'm going to need that blight protection because remember I actually need 160% blight protection because of how weakening works so I'm going to send that to Mogwai as well that won't take as long to get there so maybe Man Nanhild can hang on to that for a little bit um, just because she may need that in the upcoming battles with the dreadnought stuff so I'll, let, I'll actually let her keep that for a little while there's not really any sense in sending it to Mogwai right now but I'll need to kind of recheck that every turn to make sure all his equipment shows up at roughly the same time so with that 40 percent buff to blight and the 60 percent buff to fire and frost that's going to put mogwai at 160 percent fire protection 140 percent blight and 120 percent frost so that gets him 20 percent short of where i need to be with blight protection and uh 40 percent short of where i want to be with shock so I need a couple shock items, and one of them needs to have blight on it. So I, what I can do is go back to here, and since Magwai is not going to be using the spooky shield I was crafting anymore, I'm going to disregard that. There was a comment from Casper Eklund who mentioned static shield would have probably been better uh, for from a defensive perspective because the spooky shield had like a, a fearsome effect on it, which um, a lot of Theocrat units might have ignored. So uh, that's a good point. But regardless, Mago is going to be using a different shield anyway now. So I'm going to go into Forge Item and make uh, a helmet for Mago because he's only got that. Um, he's only got that. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's the Cure Disease item. Uh, it's like some sort of brooch or something like that. So what I'm going to do is um, give Mago this and i'm gonna give it shock protection actually what i'm gonna do is give it vision range because i'm gonna have that extra one and then we'll do shock protection and uh blight blight shock there we go and uh we'll just call this you know what this is fine uh we'll just call it mogwai's helmet and that's 
good, I think. Forge Vision Range is a great choice for a helmet like this. I'm going to hurry that production um, because I can afford to do it. I want these items on Mogwai as fast as possible. Then for the uh, other item is going to be a replacement for his legs because right now he has an item that's giving him pounce, but that's not really quite that important. Um, unfortunately, none of these really matter at all. Uh, so that's going to be kind of wasted on Mogwai to some extent. But I can still get elemental resistances on these. And this is what, I, what I'm thinking here. And I agree with Tarsak. I think he had the, the right call here. So make it shock protection and probably spirit. Just in case the Theocrat has time to get up Armageddon. Um, then Mogwai will at least still have 20% spirit resist. It won't be enough for him to reliably solo huge armies. But if he's got immunity to everything else, he should be able to still do... A lot of damage uh we'll call these what's something that looks like it would fit mogwai we'll just go with that call it mogwai's greaves okay and i may as well throw on well it actually may not matter because again mogwai is flying uh, i wonder if that one that might actually work the unit's move cost in the underground is reduced by one. Because these are all for traversing specific types of terrain. And it doesn't necessarily say that the unit can't be flying. I wonder if cave crawling would actually still work for a flyer. I'm going to throw it on there and, and we'll just find out. Because the in theory, that should allow him to like move two spaces or use two... Um, yeah, to, to, to use two movement points for every space he travels underground. Sorry, I'm a little, maybe a little out of it. I, I, I'm recording earlier in the day than I normally do. I, I just woke up not long ago, so I'm, I think my brain's not all the way there yet. Um, from So that's pretty much uh, it from Mogwai, and I accidentally just closed all my comments. That's pretty much it for Mogwai. Once he gets all that stuff, all those four items, he will essentially have become immortal for the purposes of this game and then he is just going to go on an absolute rampage and tear the theocrat apart but in the meantime we can't slow down there's still plenty of theocrat stuff to destroy right now it's possible the theocrat may be pretty much dead by the time i get all this stuff to mogwai anyway but that would be a good problem to have uh moving on let's talk about seraphine gold just a general um feedback from with regard to the battle that happened with varg where i lost a bunch of crap in this wizard tower um, so, yeah, the, um, swap locations when I tried to use it there, well, for one thing, swap locations does not work on heroes. Um, I was, I think I, I was describing how it works and saying the game counts heroes like a tier 4 unit, which, technically speaking, it does, but for the purposes of swap locations, that does not work on, <coughs> excuse me, on heroes. So, um, just general correction there, and I actually verified that, looked at the wiki, um, in the battle with Varg, I kind of acted like I felt like I was unlucky when uh, Varg it, when it swapped locations with the Fire Giant one of the Eldritch Horrors, which is not what I wanted it to do. Um, that's exactly what it's supposed to do, because it picks units of the same tier. It's not going to swap um, like a Knight with an Eldritch Horror, because a Knight's Tier 3, Eldritch Horror is Tier 4. So, keeping that mechanic in mind, I should have been more careful about that, but instead I tried to use it and ended up just getting myself into more trouble. Um, from Ahmed Sultan, break control for a lot of my heroes, uh, could be quite useful. I'll try to keep that in mind as they're leveling up. I think in particular could be handy for, um, maybe, so probably not so much Nanhild because she's got a bunch of strong will knights. Mogwai's got blood, blood brothers, blood brothers. So his army has strong will possibly like the dreadnought may have you some use for it. Uh, possibly the sorcerer as they get closer to the front line. Um, Emain's got dragons, so they're all mind control, uh, resistant. I think Emain herself only has 60% spirit protection, I think. It might be worth getting that up. Um, I was actually surprised, um, that Emain doesn't have an accessory. I'm missing one. I, I don't really know why she's missing one, but she is. So, it might be worth sending her... Uh, she's already got fire immunity. I kind of feel like... She needs something there. So maybe if I could find an accessory that grants 40% um, 
uh, resistance to spirit. That would be that would be pretty nice, or even uh, a helmet. She's getting that old orcish tower shield in a couple turns. Possibly if I could maybe get her a helmet um, and an accessory that give some spirit resistance and maybe some other form of resistance, that might be kind of nice. I could actually give her a helmet that grants extra vision range too, on top of the fact that she already has extra vision range from flying, so, and from a hero upgrade. So I think that would actually be maybe something worth doing. Um, maybe I should actually get that process started now in this city, because otherwise I'm going to forget to do it. So we're gonna forge an item and call it uh, a mains helmet. And something that an elf would wear, that way I can, or just call it a mains cowl, that'll work. Um, I want, again, vision range. Uh, let's go with spirit protection. True sight's tempting to throw on there, but I, I kind of want elemental resistances, I think. Um, going up against a lot of dreadnoughts, but I got fire covered. Physical would be nice. Maybe shock. Shock would be nice, because less likely to be stunned. There's still a sorcerer in play. So we'll just call it... It means cowl. I cannot spell. And we'll forge that. And what was the other item? It was an accessory. Let's go ahead and forge an accessory for her. Uh, we'll just call it... I think these are these are the accessories. Um, we'll call it a mains chalice. And let's see what can what would be good for this. Lots of concealment options that don't really matter at all to me. I'll probably just give her the uh, underground one. Yeah, we'll just give her cave concealment. We'll just throw it on, because why not? Um, we'll give her... It's gotta have spirit, and probably, honestly, more shock. Because I really don't want her getting stunned. That'll work. I can't type today, folks. And I just took a Steam screenshot. I'm really good. I need to find the folder where all those are stored. I've done that so many times. Not on camera, but more off. It means chalice. Okay, forge that. So we've got a good set of items coming up for everybody. Um, I'm probably going to, I'm going to hurry production on the two for Mogwai. The main stuff can wait. Um, and I might end up canceling it if I find a better, better uh, item in the meantime. So, uh, from Ahmed Sultan. Okay, I talked about break control. From Anaruda Bandare, where did the healing item and route to Varg go? That's a great question because he was. I, I'm thinking it's most likely back here in the capital. Um, it is not back here in the capital. I wonder if it like finished sending it to him because there's no items. Varg had a healing item on route to him, but when he died, I'm wondering if it just. Like the on route parcel maybe got dropped. I have to move an item onto there to see. Um, hang on a second. Let me move. I think I just said move an item, move a unit. Uh, did he get it? It did. It like finished sending it to him, <laughs> even though. Okay, well, I can send a bunch of this stuff to Varg now. May as well have it pop up in his inventory at the beginning of the next turn. And then I can just slot it all in its appropriate places. He does have a mount. He's got a horse. Uh, it's not a great mount. It's pro I probably would rather just opt to have flying on him. Oh, and he's full. Okay. So I can basically go back in here and just put all these items in whatever slots they fall into.
All right. And then that'll at least let him have that healing item at the beginning of the next turn, which I definitely want to make sure gets in his inventory. Um... He's not going to have room for all this stuff. That's okay. We'll get some of it to him later. I would like him to have the two resistance orb. I would like him to have that so it continues to work on hatching. Um, does he have a shield already? Wooden shield of spiritual faith. He's still got a couple spots. Uh, this is actually a better version of that other shield that I just sent to him. So I'm going to need to switch those. And I kind of want him to have that because he's been dealing with a lot of undead. I, may, uh, I might change some things here in a moment, but we'll put that better shield on him and then he can sell that one on the next turn. All right, so he's got all his stuff on the way now. Um, I'm going to pile everyone with him for the moment. That way, when he does get that healing item, I, I think maybe it'll trigger. I don't know what order, because he's going to get the healing item and have a chance to heal in between turns. So I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work. Um, but I might get some benefit from that healing item sending it to him now as opposed to later. Um, okay, so that takes care of Varg. From Athena Tenno, Nanhild may be better off just wearing the regrowth armor in combat anyway and using it like a damage sponge. Um, I think I'm inclined to agree with that, actually. The way I've been using Nanhild, the knights have been doing most of the heavy lifting while she kind of just sits back and heals stuff. So I think I am going to do that. Uh, it's got that... I mean, I don't know, though. That, that enchanted armor of sturdiness is really good. That's a, kind of a tough call because the 20% physical protection does matter a lot, too, and that's a lot of defense. I think I'm going to leave it with her the way it is just for now. Um... Well, you know what? We are in between turns. And that's plus two defense, plus one resistance. Fae and Animal Slayer, doesn't matter. She's got a lot of health. She does. You know what? Okay, we'll we'll swap this on just for now. Because we're in between turns right now. That'll heal her up all the way and allow her to use some of her healing to divert towards the knights who probably need it more than she does. Um, I am going to leave... You know what? I'm going to leave my units stacked up just like this, even though technically I could move forward a little bit with Nanhild's army, um, because I want to block off their route to this city to force them to use more movement to get to it. So I kind of like the position that I'm in right here. Um, okay, so that's helpful from Impregnable. Don't forget to get Rust Strike on a main as soon as possible to help with the machines. That's a great point, one that I will actually do right now. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Where is... Rust Strike. There we go. Okay, so Nanhild's got that. Um, Emain has that. Emain has that, not Nanhild. Nanhild is the dwarf. Emain is the druid. So I've got Rust Strike now in my back pocket to help out with dealing with the machines that'll be useful. Also from Impregnable, um, Feathered Serpents would be pretty useful for healing for like random wandering stacks that are sort of all over the place. Um, I don't think I actually have a city that has one of these structures in it that you need to make the feathered serpents but i probably could get one um maybe if i was to build a city somewhere in this area that would be kind of actually this would be a really nice spot because that's a that's a pretty solid choke point right around here maybe uh right on that lava river connection between a few different paths i i kind of like that either that or or possibly right here um so yeah, it might be worth getting another city ready to go. I think I'm going to do that, actually, because I have the money for it. Uh, except that the city that would make it... You know what, we'll let the Master's Guild finish there, because I've been trying to get that done for a while. That city will stay on production. Well, you know what, hang on. The Master's Guild isn't even partially built yet. Let's go ahead and, and get another Goblin Settler. And you guys can have the Master's Guild after that. But I think I'm going to throw another Goblin City down over here. That seems like a good place. Plus, there's a... That would actually make for a really great Elf City, to be honest. If I could get Elf Tech. Um, I can't seem to find any cities that are actually Elven Cities. But it probably wouldn't hurt to have another Goblin Settler in the works anyway. So we'll let that, we'll let that run. 
Uh, the last comment for this series of episodes is going to come from Nicolad, who suggested um, an interesting idea for keeping, allowing me to basically migrate cities away from Frostlings while still um, making the Frostlings happy with me. One thing you can do, and it does cost some money to do this, but you probably actually generate more money from just having the city. Basically, the idea is to find a Frostling city or build a Frostling city and then repeatedly free it as a vassal and then rebuy it as soon as you can. Um, so that would fall under the city options here. I can release as a vassal, which gives me race happiness with them. And then it also generates positive alignment and then I can rebuy it later on. Um, I don't think I want to do it with this city because I've already kind of uh, am somewhat invested in this city. I like having it permanently under my control, but um, maybe good. I think what I'm going to end up doing is when Varg can kind of move his way up this way, which I'm planning on him doing is kind of moving. Varg's tentative plan is to move up through here, grab that tower, um, grab. Is that resources there? There's some resource there I might need to pick up. Um, there's a Forbidden Sanctum here. There's just a lot of stuff Var can hit, plus he's got to get that undead. But he's eventually going to work his way up here. I might try to throw down a Frostling City somewhere around here. Um, and hopefully Varg can help with that. Possibly my Sorcerer too if needed. So that is a good idea, something you can do to kind of cheese uh, your relationship with a particular faction. Um, by the time that I can get that all set up, it might not really matter that much. For the time being, I only really needed to migrate away one Frostling City, so they're not going to hate me for life because of that. Oh wait, there's an, that's Elf. Okay, finally, we got some Elf, uh, an Elf City over here. That's, I want, I want their tech. I want the Elves tech, that would be really nice. Um, and we're through the comments, so we may as well go get the Elves tech. Uh, I see no reason to not run wildly in with Varg. Unfortunately, not everyone can make it in on this. Wait a second. The Theocrat's about to die. The Theocrat's about to die. That's their leader, and they're in their capital. They've got a couple shrines of smiting there. Um, who is slowing this army down? You are going to get ditched. A couple people are. This may be too good of an opportunity to pass up, because I may be able to knock the Theocrat out now. And then... Uh... Nothing else really matters. Mogwai is already borderline immortal to everything they can throw at me because he's got spirit protection. He's got fire, blight, and physical. So the only things they could potentially damage me with are frost and shock. Could Mogwai solo this? She's got Spirit Ray, probably mostly Spirit Damage stuff. She could inflict Chilling on, but she can't actually hit me with an attack, so she can't inflict Chilling on me. Uh, okay, Divine Vengeance could be a problem. Does 20 damage. That's the only thing I think that they've got. The Zephyr Birds aren't going to do anything. The Evangelist can't do anything. Okay. What I think I'm going to do is bring as many people in on this as I can. So we'll bring you guys. The Slowpokes are going to have to stay behind. Oh, I can get my Flight Doctor in. That's good. Uh, let's also bring in the... You know what? We might need you to puncture a hole in the wall. So we'll bring in the big beetle. We'll bring in maybe the shock trooper. And then these guys can go here. We'll just do the battle like this. I'm not comfortable with Mogwai soloing against three shrines of smiting that can each do 20 damage per divine vengeance. So I'm going to try to be a little more careful than that. This says probable defeat, but if I play my cards right, I think Mogwai wins this one easy. So let's do this. Let's let's knock out the Theocrat. That's really the only... Uh, Armageddon was really the only main thing that I was worried about. So this more or less paves the way for my eventual victory if I can get rid of her. Uh, 
Okay, Slayer's doubt on the knight, that's fine. Um, Mogwai should probably just run forward. Followed by his army of minions. And I'm gonna use the uh, Warbreed and the Big Beetle to break down that wall as fast as I can. And I will probably just bunch everybody else up. Also, if she wants to use Slayer's Doubt, that's fine. I really hope Prismatic Spire targets Mogwai a couple times. <laughs> it's not gonna do anything to him. Oh, the game is just... I think I've somehow broken the game a bit here. Because <laughs> it seems very confused as to, like, what it thinks I'm capable of, saying this is a probable defeat. Like, it's not taking... it. it's just not taking Mogwai into account. Okay, I want a charge bonus for this. Not quite enough to break... wait, did I get it? No, it's got four health left, that's too bad. Okay, well, the Shock Trooper's gonna have to wait. A moment then. But in the meantime, Mogwai can fly up here and start hitting stuff. Go ahead and Divine Vengeance, that's fine. Uh, the others can't all gang up on him, so it's no big deal. The Shrine, and I don't really have to worry about attacks of opportunity either, since the Shrines of Smiting are the only things that can actually attack me. Um, I do probably want to be careful with some of my other units. Okay. Well, you uh, just use your ace in the hole there. So I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna do actually. You back up. I want this guy up there with Mogwai breaking things. Mogwai, I think, has killing momentum, does he? Uh, maybe he doesn't. Yeah, I don't think he does. Okay, never mind then. Um, anybody else can probably finish that off. Except for that the war breed's in the way. The spider could get it, but that would require phasing the spider onto the wall. I don't think I really want to do that. Uh, perhaps should have weakened the shrine first, but that's... Okay, I'm gonna just let Mogwai finish it, because he's not really in danger of getting hurt badly by anything up there. Uh, you should probably back off, you took quite a beating. Um, I'm gonna move this little guy over here, and just get him in position to cast Weakening on something if he needs to. Oh, I meant to move that spider as well. Okay, they're just wasting their time casting Slayers down on other crap, which is really what I want them to do. I'm okay with that. They're also trying to daze that Warbreed, I think. Um, Smiting Fur Bolt. Oh, wait, no. Hang on. Smiting Fur Bolts doesn't daze. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... You know what? I need to... Start breaking this without letting having the war breed um, have uh, have to smell the goblin big beetle. Let's. Uh, I, I think maybe I want to break this wall so that more stuff can get up there. Or do I just want? to... Oh wait, that's a zephyr bird, not a griffin rider. Never mind. You can do that. Okay. Uh, let's go for a pounce, I think, right here. That'll leave Mogwai in defense and hopefully lure those trying to smiting into using their uh, Divine Vengeance on him. Hopefully. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of just... I think these other units are, are mostly just gonna sit back and watch here. Um, I might be able to get a weakness off on somebody. Uh, no, not quite. Not with... Not without going in range of the Exalted, which I don't really want to do, so this is good enough for me. Okay, come on. Divine Vengeance Mogwai, you know you want to. Nope. Gonna go for the softer units. Alright, fine. 
This guy just does not care though, which is great. Um, I kind of need to heal. You know what? I can at least trap this one where it's at. And then, then my other units can deal with this other one here. So. I should have weakened that first. The big beetle is getting a little beat up to the point where it's a little uncomfortable. So I'm probably gonna draw him off pretty soon. Yeah, that Warbreed still got a ton of health. He does not really need the extra help. So I'm just gonna back those guys up. Play it safe this time. Mogwai's got this one trapped. That one, that guy's not going anywhere. Could you maybe stop targeting, not target the war breed with that, like, right now? That'd be great. Oh, wait. Oh, those things float. Okay, never mind. They can go right over the wall. Whatever. Anyway, that one's broken now. Also, this one's about to be quite broken. And nothing else here can fight Mogwai. Uh, the rest of them have nothing, no choice but to go after that war breed. Might be time to consider getting off the battlefield with some of these troops. I'm going to destroy you with High Elf Slayer. How does that sound? I can't convert because that's their main hero. <laughs> You know what? Sit on defense. You sit on defense and let them come to you. Everybody is going to take some damage here. That's okay. Warbreed is going to mess up anything that comes his way. Goodbye. Um, are you immune to mind control stuff? Mind control immunity, okay. Well, you're not immune to weakening. All right then. That is another enemy down. Lucky that I caught them in their capital like this. And that was really, in my opinion, the last major threat. Now, the Warlord could be a threat for a different reason, because they just have a ton of units. But at least I don't feel like I'm on a timetable anymore fighting against global spells, because the only two who are left now um, are... And what was the... Hang on. What was the hotkey for... What was the hotkey for quick save? Uh, I, I, I want to do that. Control... I've got it set to control S, okay. So let's just do that real quick since I've had uh, computer crashes lately. Um, okay, so let's look at the uh, overview panel here. No, diplomacy is what we want. So High Elf defeated. So the only ones I have left are Drigal the Stout and he's currently in the void. Um, he can get great mobilization, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Uh, Vontor that's shocking is Goblin Sorcerer. He can get um, Agent Magic, which again, not the end of the world, at least not for me. It's very good for him, but it doesn't hurt me actively um, like Armageddon would. And then the High Elf Warlord, who's just going to have a bunch of gold tier units. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I, I think... My next target that I would like to get rid of is the Sorcerer, because with him out of the game, then I could start using my global spells more effectively. Um, and not have to worry about them getting disjuncted quite so quickly. As long as the Sorcerer is on the field, that's going to be harder to do. But regardless, I think uh, Mogwai is in very good shape here. Um, what kind of items are we looking at? We've got Inflict Chilling, which that... I think I wanted an Inflict Chilling item on a main, actually. Maybe that's what I was doing with her. 
I was gonna make her an inflict, inflict chilling item. I remember I was looking for that on somebody. It was whoever had arrows that could potentially freeze stuff. Yeah, it was a main. Okay, that's going to her. Um, I need to move... Uh, well, I could actually send that to her from this menu. Yeah, that, that can go to a main. Um, Big Beetle, I'm going to sell. I don't need another one. Don't need the Holy Symbol. Do not need the Cause Sphere item. Uh, don't need that crappy shield. I think all that stuff, Mogwai can just move on to that tile and sell. Get some quick cash here. Yeah. That's a lot of money. All right, cool. All right, and it looks like the Dreadnought borders are immediately to the west. So maybe it would be good for me to put some pressure on them from here. Now, why are there so many red units down? I've seen them down here, and I've seen them now over here, but haven't actually seen any red cities yet. So I don't know what is going on, whether they actually have cities underground down here, and I haven't seen them yet. I'm not really sure. Uh, one way or another, I could pretty easily go take them out. Uh, Mogwai could probably do that on his own, but I'm not not quite ready yet to send him out alone. Against the Warlord, I think he would fare pretty well, though. Maybe now is a good time for him to split off from everybody. No... No, I'm not going to get ahead of myself just yet. I'm not going to get ahead of myself just yet. I can be patient for four more turns and just wait for him to actually become immortal. Um, did I start sending the shield to him? Oh, wait, no, though. That was a main, and she's closer, so I decided to hold off on that. That's right. Uh, let's see. Who else can make it in with him? So I want that war breed with Mogwai at all times right now. Uh, we'll send the spider in who can use healing. A couple units could use healing. Several of them could use healing, actually. And uh, we'll just throw the knight in there, just because why not? We'll camp out in this city overnight. And uh, I'm going to absorb this, because I really want elf tech. And then I'm probably going to make a couple elf cities. But that's really, really... That's a great way to start this set of three episodes. Also, speaking of starting this set, set of three episodes, I completely forgot... When I actually started recording, I have no idea how long I've been going, so um, I'm just going to assume I'm at like roughly a halfway point here, maybe, something like that. Might stop in another 20 minutes or so. Um, Stables of Vigor is done, Rider's Hall, I'm going to change that, and Rider's Hall is fine, I just want to make sure I have something queued up behind it. Although I think I'm actually pretty close, I think I could actually start making Manticores in this city. Um, I don't need the Fire Temple, I don't need the Pillar of the Stylites, Mercenary Camp, don't need an Arcane Item Forge here. Uh, Great Temple, don't need Public Baths, Guardhouse Arena, nope, we're good. We can start making Tiger and Manticore Riders for the foreseeable future in that city. As soon as that is done, I can also select something new for research. What do I want today? That is a strategic spell that requires me to keep it up. Combat spells are probably... Ooh, I like that one. Giving all my units tireless. Let me go ahead and pick that up. I'll try to focus on researching the big ones, so if I get a research breakthrough, I can maybe grab a bunch of the smaller ones faster. Um, it also might be... You know what? I want to go ahead and get Global Assault. I just want to have that ready to go for when it's needed. Uh, observatory is done here. Let's... And again, this city is, is one that I'm... I am going to build a Grand Palace in. Uh, so the next step, I suppose, would be a temple. Because I have been having some mana income issues. Uh... But that's kind of changing pretty quickly because I'm also... I'm just going to build temples in all these cities that are done making shrines. And I might start upgrading some of these random cities towards Grand Palaces. 
So builder's hall, storehouse. Um, I have the money to do it. And in the long run, casting points are gonna be useful. Uh, this city, I've been trying to upgrade to a grand palace for a while, I think, but we'll do, uh, we'll get those lined up for now and then see where we're at in a couple turns. Gladiator Pit is done here. Oh yeah, I was planning on making, um, that's what this city was doing. Okay, you know what? I'm canceling that settler because I'm going to build an elf settler and send it to the spot that I was thinking of near the, uh, that underground crystal tree and, um, and, uh, the lost city. But I, I, I forgot that I, I want goblin phalanxes, so... Um, we'll do that. We'll do a guard house here. And let's see. I don't need the arena, not for phalanxes. Beetle command was useful because that'll produce items will be produced at a higher or units will be produced at a higher rank. I think I'm gonna hurry production of that uh, master's guild. May as well hurry production of everything that I can while I can as long as it doesn't drop morale below a certain threshold. Uh, this has been affected by an announced city, which is now gone because the Theocrat added up, so no worries there. Um, what do we got here? This is a Tigran. I migrated this to Tigran, I think. Uh, perhaps specifically for more Manticore riders, I think, it was because of the uh, Spring of Life down here. So may as well start upgrading it to that effect. We'll do a Master's Guild. Um, they're not like super happy, so we'll we'll let them. We, we I won't bother them too much with hurrying production, and we'll have a warlord's command and a stables of vigor, and kind of just let it run through that. Um, there are a lot of tiles around here that I could turn to barons to help out with happiness a bit, so I should probably do that. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to do that at the end of my turn. Uh, Theocrat's dead, so that's always nice. Summer of Love, that's really good in... Oh, yeah, that's great in this city. That makes it only five turns away from becoming a metropolis. That's perfect. Observatory, we'll have that afterwards. The borders will grow between metropolis and observatory by two, and then I'll be able to start making tame trolls here. Um, I, I do need the... Uh, uh, what is it that for the Rook Goblin race governance? Um, I think I need a specific building. It's probably the Beetle Command, but I'm going to double check. Tame Trolls with the Beetle Command upgrade. Okay. So I'm going to need Beetle Command in this city. We'll go ahead and get uh, the Shrine in the Observatory first. And I think the Barracks leads to the War Hall, which leads to Beetle Command, if I remember correctly. I don't think I'm going to need Warlord's Command here, because the city's pretty much just going to do trolls. And Solar Spire is for pikemen. Okay. So don't need that. Don't need the focus. Where did the city pick up a focus chamber at? Why? Huh? Oh, it's right there. I forgot that was in that city. Okay. All right, Thanos attacked Independence and won. See, that's, this is why I'm so confused. Red's got armies up here, but then random units like way, way down there in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I am going to uh, go across the water and kind of loop around to the back, I think, following the edge of the map, looking for cave entrances or any other strategic points of interest. Uh, Gold Dragon is still trying desperately to catch up to Mogwai and his crew, which are just blazing forward at breakneck speeds at this point. Um, I think this is probably the way to go. We'll park next to that city for a turn and carry on from there. Um, maybe Mogwai and the Gold Dragon could just hang out, because the Gold Dragon would at least distract units. I don't know, if Mogwai is truly immortal, he, I probably shouldn't have anybody with him though, I guess. Maybe the Gold Dragon could just hang out with the rest of these guys and buff their morale. <laughs> I was actually thinking about buffing Mogwai's morale, but it might be better to have to go the other way on that. All right, this guy's gonna have a new beetle mount coming soon, so I'll just put that in its appropriate slot. And uh, time to go underground and cause some mischief. Oh, 
Also, because I am producing and hurrying production of that item, I need to get a unit over there to actually pick up said item. So I'll send that mystic back to handle that. In the meantime, these guys can go underground and break some stuff down here. We'll start messing around, messing up yellow a little bit. I think sounds like a good time. Enter and move forward there. So at least we have a small army operating in that area. Uh, these guys are still not good enough to take that structure. I think I, this is one of those weird armies that I just have no idea what to do with it because they're not really powerful enough to do anything in particular. Uh, I think I can dig all this out. Um, and I probably will have this guy just, in fact, dig all of this, this crap out here. Um... What am I going to do with these guys? I need to make a decision about this and stop procrastinating it. I mean, watching this choke point here isn't bad, and they probably don't have to worry about wandering groups of units, like, messing them up. But I also want... How close am I to... Okay, one turn before I can ask them for a vassal, so I'll wait for that. Oh, speaking of vassal cities, because I have a lot of money now, I can afford to, with many cities... Um, or many of the dwellings specifically, uh, I can start paying for peace with them. Okay. Well, I can, I guess, let me know when you're ready to talk is fine. There's a couple I spotted before I started recording the episode. Okay, the giants were one here. I'll accept peace with them. And where, there was another dragon dwelling. We'll say, let me know when you're ready to talk with the mermaids. Where was the dragon dwelling that I spotted? Was it this? It was this. Let's just drop some money on um, diplomacy-related stuff. Oh, wait. Uh, before I get... Okay, so we'll do this. Okay, that city's got stuff to do for a while. Um, still have to decide what to do with these guys. So I think that um, this is one of those armies uh, that Impregnable was suggesting could really benefit from a feathered serpent because healing's been an issue. I think eventually they'll kind of buddy up with the sorcerer here. And plus I've got those war breeds coming for my sorcerer, which are gonna be really nice. Uh, so I think what I will end up doing is just moving forward and securing this central location with them. The only problem is like there's a northern road here, but maybe this army would be better off stationed watching this choke point at that northern road and moving west rather than sitting back. Um, there's another, well, that, that's interesting. There's another um, uh, spring of life up there. So there's also another monster den. Uh, let me count something out real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They'd be okay positioned there. That, this might be a good spot for a fort actually. And I do have a builder nearby. You know what, that's, that's my plan with these guys. Move forward, build a fort there and uh and kind of hold that position with this army just to prevent because I, I i suspect the warlords got stuff up in here so i'd like to have a decent little choke point um and this would be a really nice fort because of the way it's set up um, and it would help protect this central location allowing the sorcerer to move south from here i think that's a good plan uh yep let's do that these guys are strong enough they can start handling some of these little armies here And are, they're all gold ranked. Most of these units are gold ranked too, so I'm gonna have a lot of extra health on these guys, which is really, really nice. Unfortunately, don't handle the choking fumes so good. All right, um, I'm gonna try to get them to come closer to me. I don't feel like running all the way over there. And we'll keep these guys somewhat spread out. Aha, fumble. Alright, and now it's Bull Rush. Uh, 
uh, yeah, we'll have them take those stairs. Take center stairs. It's I need to close the distance on these guys. And these battles, I don't like toxic fumes when there's a bunch of flamers because it's hard to catch up to them. At least he fumbled it here. Okay, Orc Priest is going to be okay against that um, horse if he really wants a one-on-one -on -one fight with melee. Uh, you can finish him. Okay, that was easy. Uh, I did forget to try to charm something. Whoa, hey, hey. Now, it's more important that I don't lose a unit than that I successfully charm one. I was kind of hoping that would happen. Okay. You should probably get out of here. Okay, that is fine. Let's just do a melee attack. Okay, I don't like fighting in those. Those are some of my least favorite battles to do, just because of the the gas and the general slowness of how all your units move. I don't know that these guys could take... Well, actually, actually, this would probably be a really good battle for me. Maybe I'll wait a turn, let my units heal just that little bit of health they lost, but... Actually, I think this would be a pretty good battle, because I have so many butchers, and they all have lifesteal. And that's just a bunch of flying units. So, I actually think that I will do pretty well there. Um, okay, you guys have some work to do in this area while those war breeds catch up. So, let's get some mana. I think I'm, I'm comfortable autoing this one. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe not the next one. So I've got that knight in there that really, yeah, this one, this one can't be an auto. I've got that, or this horse in here that I need to be careful with. And that's a lot of node serpents. I might, I'm not sure that everyone's gonna actually survive this fight. Okay, at the very least, the sorcerer can try to uh, buff my or can buff my units here. He's got that regrowth armor on, so he's slow. Um, I'm thinking probably star blades is the way to go in this particular fight. Wouldn't mind having it on a tireless orc shock trooper positioned right here. And you can you can try to net something, which would be fun. Although I think I have to get right next to it for that to work. Disgust both of them. Cavalry should probably hang back. Um, maybe back here. They can phase, so I have to be mindful of that. It's only a 30% chance to ensnare a net, so I'm thinking maybe not. I'm thinking I might actually just charge at him, try to use up his action points. So maybe the person who needs... You know what? I know who I want to have Starblade. It's going to be that Shock Trooper. You, for now, can just sit here and get, like, a small hit in. That's sufficient for now. I want that Shock Trooper on defense. I want Ice Queen on defense. Oh, 
that's... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I should have probably seen that coming. It's a good thing I'm doing well at other parts of the field because I'm kind of sucking it up with these heroes in the back. Alright. Um, well, we may as well hit those guys as hard as we can while they're while they're here. At least I've got a nearby city I can summon this guy from, but I would like to use my mana for other things, for things other than resurrecting heroes. Um, I would like to still... The important thing is not to panic or get tilted in situations like this, so... Let's just carefully finish off the rest of these units. The Ice Queen couldn't reach them anyway on this particular turn, so there's no reason to... Um, have her go after this group. I think if I can do this right, if the Orc Shock Trooper can kill one of these things, I wonder if it would give him enough XP to level up and trigger killing momentum. I don't know. I could try it. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have the beetle in a position like this anyway. Disgusting both of those. That allows him to come in for a flank right here. Now is that enough with Warcry to kill? Maybe? In fact, probably? Nineteen plus five plus five, a guaranteed twenty-nine. I am not going to trust those odds. I'm going to try to tip them in my favor a bit here. Not enough to level up, unfortunately. Use they all use their movement abilities, so... Oh, wait, I didn't mean to leave him exposed. Well, I got one of them. They're probably going to kill something else, but... Yeah, I didn't want him to go. What are you gonna do? Alright. I got that guy for free anyway. This Ice Queen has been around for a while and is now finally gold rank. So maybe I can do something with her. I could also work towards leveling up another knight. I think what I'm gonna do is do that. And I froze him. Okay, good. Stroke of good luck there. You can go pick on the apprentice. That should be right up your alley there. Leaves him with very few options. And he can take him out because he's got Monster Slayer. Oh, oh you jerk. Finish him, please. All right, well, that's disappointing, but whatever. I'll resurrect the Sorcerer and give him an army of war breeds. We'll see how they like that. Mystic Archer's Bane, Projectile Reflection. Ooh. That's nice. That actually would be another good item for a main, I think. Because this Sorcerer's already got a... Oh, I don't re Actually, I don't remember. We'll leave it there for now. Because um, I've got other items going to a main. Some boats on the water. Yellow. Okay, well, we're just going to have to resurrect the, the sorcerer. So, let's do that again. <laughs> Getting good at that. Um, we'll have to pop him back up by that city and then just run back down there and get my stuff. At least there's an easy way to get around that. How do I want to do this? Oh yeah, it's build a road. Oh wait. Oh, I can't do that unless the wall on the other side is dug out. Ha! Huh. Whoops. Uh, okay, didn't mean to do that. But whatever. 
He's got to go all the way around and dig out the wall on the other side for that to work. To get a bridge to go through there. Hmm. Okay. I guess that's what I'll do. Actually, um, I should be building a road the whole way through here. I'll start it, like, there, and then I can double back if I need to. Okay. Can you get into the city on this turn? Yes, you can. Let's not raise that. Found a city right here. All right. Okay. So I've got these other scattered units here. I've got um, also a troll that's come to help. He's not very happy about the current situation, but he's still going to do a great job, I'm sure. Uh, I also think I need to call this episode here. I don't know how long I've been recording, so if this might be a shorter one. This might be a longer one. I don't really know. I'll check the time before I start the next one to try to round it out to roughly an hour. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, all, t all things considered, a good episode for me just by virtue of the fact that I killed the Theocrat. I just wish I could stop having um, the AI independence gang up and kill my weaker heroes in the back. It's getting irritating because I want them to be leveling up. But... Regardless, um, all things considered, like I said, pretty good to have the Thayer crowd out of the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I will uh, go ahead and record the next one right after this, so I will see you soon. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Brayden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Tarsac, and Tibby and Army. Thanks so much, everybody.